Hey guys, CLE Tech here with our first video, um, and we're really happy to bring you our first video of the OnePlus One. Um, I know a lot of you people know a lot about this phone already. Um, a lot of it's good because of the high-end specs for such a low price point, but there has been some bad uh, press there out about the OnePlus One, uh, mostly because of the invite system, but we were able to get a phone, and we're just gonna jump right into it. Here is our review of the OnePlus One. All right, guys, so taking a look at the device, um, as you can see, it's a huge screen, 5.5 inches, um, 1080p display, and the phone has capacitive buttons on the bottom, but they are really dim, like 99% of the time. Uh, if I can get this back on here, I will show you that, see, they are very dim and very hard to pick up. Um, you can change that, and we'll show you that in a little bit, but taking a look around the device here, up at the top, you've got your... I believe five megapixel shooter, front-facing shooter, and your um, speaker grill, um, as well as if we go to the left side here, there is your volume up and down toggle and uh, your SIM card tray, um, which comes with the really fancy SIM ejector that you'll have to look at on the box there um, when you get your device. Going on the right side, the power button is on the right-hand side and in a perfect place. Um, I don't have, I have pretty decent sized hands and it just kind of fits perfectly where I put my thumb when holding it with my right hand. Now if you're left handed it's not going to really work out but I think it's a good spot. Going down to the bottom you have your stereo speakers um, so it's not just one speaker they're actually two and um, you also have your another microphone there and your micro USB port it's just a very standard micro USB port. Um, but yeah, there's a microphone there on the bottom, a microphone on the back, and there's another microphone up top by the speaker uh, grill. So I believe that's three microphones that the OnePlus One has on the body itself. Now, as much as I really like the feeling of that sandstone uh, on the phone here, um, what I don't like is how easily it scuffs. Now, that's assumingly from taking it in and out of my pocket. Um, I don't know how that happens, but I know a few cases do that, and that really, really irritates me. And I don't want to put a case on this phone because of how great the back feels, but um, I also don't want that to be um, to scuff up a lot. And I, f I find that it's really ridiculous that I've only had this phone for a month, and it's already got a few nicks there on that faux metal, um, which I also don't like. And um, how that back plate is kind of scuffing up there. Um, it's, it's very sensitive, and putting a case on it kind of defeats the purpose of that sandstone feeling, like I said, but again, I, this phone is very, not cheaply made, I know that it is cheap in the price point, but um, the design is great, I just don't think it kind of holds up like the HTC One M8 does. So just to jump in, overview of the specs here, um, it's a 5.5 inch 1080p display with a 401 PPI, which is not that great considering how large the screen is but uh, I know they had to cut some corners there and they wanted to make a big phone so I suppose I can understand this display still looks great to me but um, after looking at the G3 uh, the G3 definitely wins out of course it is a 4k display but it has 3 gigs of RAM so as you can see here uh, it is stock Android like so f it flies through especially with 3 gigs of RAM there is no lag um, with that 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon 801 processor that it also packs in um, so this phone is a beast and at $350 for the 64 gigabyte variant I think that is an excellent deal um, you can also get a 16 gigabyte variant for uh, $299 as well jumping into the software now um, it is running CyanogenMod 11s which was specially made for the OnePlus One when they teamed up with CyanogenMod and um, as you can see the settings menu is almost identical to stock Android. And if you ever use CyanogenMod before, you'll notice that it's, you know, it adds in a couple of extra, um, a couple of extra features in the settings menu, but overall it looks just like stock Android. Um, as you can see, there is a theme engine that you can do to personalize it more. We'll jump back into that in a minute. Um, but the lock screen, um, now it, you can have the Nexus lock screen, 
Uh, with that Cyanogen mod feature where if you double tap the screen here and you hold down the lock button, you can swipe up to apps. That is pretty normal for a lot of custom ROMs, especially Cyanogen mod. But for the 11S, there is a different type of lock screen. If we go back in here and hit custom lock screen, um, turn off the phone. When you have a notification, it kind of pops up in this uh, down at the bottom here, right above where the battery and weather is at, in this blue, tr I know it's kind of hard to see because the background is blue, but it's a blue shade there, and the notifications, really I've noticed just for messages kind of show up in that little area right here, but um, it it's kind of hard to see, I know, but with the notifications that pop up there, I don't know why the email or um, you know, weather or anything pops up. Well, the weather's down there, but any other notifications that come on don't really pop up there except for messages. Hopefully, Sinogen Mod can fix that in the future. And jumping into the interface portion, um, you can go into the status bar and customize a lot of the settings here for your status bar. Um, I like to see the battery text uh, of the percentage. I don't know why that is not a stock feature on every phone but uh, apparently stock Android does not have that and you usually have to be rooted to get that on your Nexus 5. The OnePlus of course has that baked into the CyanogenMod software. Um, you can also do a um, icon or you know hide the battery completely. Brightness control is cool. You can use a status bar to control the brightness level. You can slide uh, left to dim it or to the right to increase the brightness of the screen. This isn't totally new if you are a custom ROMer. Uh, this is something that a lot of the custom ROMs have baked into there. Uh, but this comes right out of the box with the CyanogenMod 11S on the OnePlus One. And you can also double tap to sleep the phone um, on the status bar, which I don't like to do if I have the uh, brightness control because it kind of messes everything up. Um, heading back into the interface here, there's the quick settings panel. So when you swipe down and you get your quick toggles on the right there, uh, you can customize and put whichever uh, additional toggle you might want, um, as well as a few other different modes that I don't really use that often, so you guys might want to jump in there and mess around with. Um, gesture shortcuts is something that is really cool. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, but as you can see here uh, in buttons, this is where the on-screen nav bar, uh, I was telling you before, if you don't like the capacitive buttons, you can put it to stock Android. The uh, custom nav navigation bars here, the on-screen buttons, um, you can go ahead and put that on. I like the extra screen real estate, so I will turn that back off. Um, I've gotten used to it, but you can go ahead and enable on-screen nav bar. Another cool feature uh, of Cyanogen Mod 11S, and I, I believe a lot of the other ROMs are starting to put this in, is the theme engine, um, where you can go ahead and virtually customize everything about your phone from the theme packs there, where you can download it, or the styles and icons here. If you look in, there's the different theme packs. Um, the Hexo is the default Cyanogen Mod 11S version, and Hollow is basically your stock Android, what comes on normal Cyanogen Mod 11. Um, but you can download any type of theme from the theme store, theme showcase store, that uh, is a separate app. But it virtually allows you to change, like I said, the style, the, the way the settings menu looks, the way the notification toggles look, um, the icons, uh, pretty much everything. So let's go ahead in here and take a look at all the different, I'm sorry I scrolled so fast here, but all the different types of themes that you can download. Um, I went ahead and downloaded the Android L theme, and we'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but right now we have the, uh, the Hexo default one, and we have that put on here. And some of, the, some of the icons change, not all of them do, and that's kind of frustrating. So I recommend kind of getting a uh, icon pack that you can just use from the Play Store and changing that so that all the icons change. Um, but that's personally my, just my opinion. So like I said before, I went ahead and downloaded a theme for us to uh, take a look at. It is the Android L theme um, off the developer preview of the new Android operating system that should be out this fall. Um, now it doesn't change everything, but it changes a lot of it and it's actually pretty cool. So if you can't wait to see the Android L, 
uh, you know, theme on your phone, then go ahead and download this from the theme store. Um, it's pretty great, and I'll show you in a minute here what it does. But like I said before, it changes everything to that theme. And uh, we're going to go ahead and check all of these here and then hit apply. So you check the style and wallpapers and just go on down the list. And once you get everything checked, um, you will hit apply. And just like that, it applies and it's done and literally everything has changed to the Android L you get that material design notification tray is white I know it's not the same where you pull down again and get the toggles but it looks pretty close your notifications are the white theme instead of the black um, you can hit the clear all button here which I, I heard Android L does not have which is weird um, I hope they put that in there because it is definitely helpful and not having to swipe every single notification away um, as you can see, there's that material design for the notification toggles. And uh, if I head back into settings, the menu theme is that white blue material design to it. <clears throat> the icons remain as stock Android because that is what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and change just about anything. Another cool feature of the OnePlus One lies within the uh, interface. Uh, settings menu is gesture shortcuts. If you go to gesture shortcuts, you can see that you have three specific things you can do with the off-screen gesture control. Now what this does is very similar to the Oppo Find 7 and Find 7a. Um, you will draw a circle to activate the camera um, or a, draw a V to toggle the flashlight while the screen is off, by the way. And um, you can also, there's some for music, which I don't really like a lot because I find that I, I do it in my pocket a lot um, on accident, but basically two fingers to play or pause a track. Um, but let's go ahead real quick and I'll turn off the menu or the phone and draw a circle. And as you can see, it's launching right into the camera app. And this is great if you are out and about and you need to take a quick photo um, instead of going right into the um, app drawer and you know getting your camera out wherever it is. Uh, you can just draw a circle on while the screen is off and that will launch the camera app. What else is great is if you are in a dark spot and you really need to turn on the flashlight uh, while the screen is off you can also draw a V and that will turn on the flashlight and that is a really useful feature if you find yourself to be in the dark a lot and you really need quick access to your flashlight um, I like the idea of it, but like I said, while it's in my pocket, sometimes I don't notice that when my hands are in there uh, that I've accidentally drawn a V. The, the touch screen is so sensitive that the music and flashlight controls happen way often than I'd like them to in my pocket and causes the battery to drain, and that is no bueno. Speaking of the camera, the camera is a 13 megapixel shooter. Um, and as you can see here, it takes it has the uh, the filters where you can see the filters before you shoot, which I think is great. If you swipe from left to right here, uh, you can toggle between different types of shooting modes um, and, and your filters and your HDR and all that. And I think that's very useful. You don't have to go in and, or you don't have to take the picture and edit it. You can see what it's like before you take the picture and decide whether or not that's the type of filter you want um, when you take your photo. I don't think the camera is okay. Like I said, it's a 13 megapixel shooter, but it's not, it doesn't have the greatest, um, it doesn't take the greatest photos in the world. But for me, it's perfect on what I like to take photos with. I usually am a quick, uh, you know, I, I just pull out the, the phone to take a quick photo. Um, if you swipe to the right, you can get to your photos quickly and you can edit them on the fly. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, and that's really the only thing that I use the camera for is to take quick photos. All right, guys, to wrap it up here, um, we're so glad that you guys were able to watch our first video, uh, the review of the OnePlus One. Um, please subscribe below if you haven't already. Um, there will be a link to our Twitter below as well. And if you can, give us a thumbs up. We would greatly appreciate it. And please just leave us any feedback uh, that you think you might want us to know. Um, we'll be doing a lot more videos in the future. And until then, we'll see you later.